Right, we're back uh, with uh, discussions right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Of course, um, getting to a first major uh, conversation. We'll be talking about positives and negatives from the Super Falcons outing in the United States of America and uh, the situation currently with um, uh, the English Premier League club, Chelsea Football Club. But let's start off with Chelsea um, Football Club. And of course, um, I'd like to welcome at this point Monday Thomas, uh, usual guest analyst, sports journalist, reaching us live uh, from the capital of Aquabum State, Uyo City. Monday, good morning to you. Great to have you join us this morning again. Good morning to you as well. I mean, a fantastic Friday, and uh, you know, we are still paying tributes to the Queen. I'm not really certain Premier League football will go ahead this weekend, but I'm excited to be talking sports with you. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic indeed. Um, let's start things off with uh, the the situation in Chelsea Football Club. The first question I have to ask you before we talk about Graham Porter. Um, were you surprised at the sacking of Thomas Tuchel? Uh, I mean, uh, I was not surprised. I mean, I've been around football for a very long time. I mean, this is the Chelsea culture. I was a little bit surprised that, okay, we have a new owner, Chelsea have a new owner, and they are still maintaining that culture of firing managers when they are not uh, providing the needed results. You know, Chelsea have spent about $278 million, and I've gotten sources who are trying to say that uh, a third boilies uh, administration is just trying to make people forget about Abramovich. He has come to spend the most amount of cash in the summer transfer window, uh, an amount uh, Abramovich couldn't spend in, in a single transfer window. And he has come to, to tell people, whatever Abramovich could do, I can do the same and I can do even better. So it's a Chelsea culture. I've been around Chelsea. I've seen a lot happen. Coaches have come and gone. But one thing about Chelsea, they are business-oriented side. They love to get the results, often on the pitch. Imagine if they're, if they're spending 278 million, they need results. And one bad thing about them is they need really fast. So that's the only negative I'll get from that particular one. But firing Thomas Tuchel, many people saw it coming. Chelsea were not playing so well. Thomas Tuchel was not doing the right form of business. I think he lost, he lost his job last season where he got off the wrong foot with the Roman Lukaku which was Chelsea's record signing. And from that, Roman Lukaku was struggling. He, he, he kept coming up from the bench. This is Chelsea's record signing. You should do everything to make sure he is producing goals and he's producing the needed results. So Thomas Tuchel, for some reasons, had lost the dressing room before he lost his job. So I'm, I'm not so surprised. But I'm just shocked that uh, Todd Borley has come out to continue the main culture of Chelsea, which is foreign manager, getting results, and of course winning trophies. Hmm. Um, if we look at the English Premier League uh, table, Chelsea stands uh, in the sixth position after six games, one winning three, drawing one, and losing two with ten points, just five points behind Arsenal, uh, who are at the top of the or the summit of the EPL. Um, it's early days yet as far as the EPL is concerned. I mean, Arsenal, uh, who did all or nothing last season, uh, were nowhere to be found at the early stages of the league, but were able to almost get into the Champions League. In the UEFA Champions League, it's um, you know early days yet, just the first game, and uh, in everyone, I'm sure including yourself, uh, will, will believes that Chelsea will comfortably make it to the next stage of the Europa Champions, UEFA Champions League. So um, some Chelsea fans are shocked that, and they feel that, I mean, Chelsea is ahead of Liverpool for, for, for crying out loud. And Liverpool themselves also didn't have a good outing, losing woefully to, um, uh, you know, Napoli, who, who beat them 4-1, I mean, and Napoli themselves didn't play well because if they played what they should have played and scored the goals they should have scored, they should have thrashed Liverpool by at least six goals or seven goals to one. So what do you say to that, those who say Chelsea is not in a bad position at the moment? Of course they are not. I mean, Chelsea always have a good omen when they find it, when they fire managers. I can go back to uh, Di Matteo when Chelsea won their first year of our Champions League. It was after Piaz Bosch was fired because he wasn't getting the needed results. Imagine Chelsea were, I think in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, the second leg of the Napoleon encounter, 
they fired Gilles Boas to get Di Matteo. And guess what? Di Matteo came in and won the UEFA Champions League. Thomas Tuchel was brought in when Frank Lampard was fired. And they came on to win the Champions League. I mean, it's a culture thing. So Chelsea, for me, are on the right foot. Getting Harry uh, Graham Potter. I almost said Harry Potter. <laughs> because the man, I think, is a magician. <laughs> yes, indeed. The man is a magician. With, with what he's doing with uh, Brighton. I mean, he even can do that with Brighton with average players. And when you take a look at he, he, the way he talks to his players, his countenance, you know that this man knows what he's doing. Thomas Tuchel had a wrap of things when he started as a manager. But as things went, he started losing the dressing room. For a side like Chelsea, I'm sorry, Kai Havertz cannot be a number nine. Ryan Sterling cannot be a number nine. You must get a lethal number nine if you're to go forward. And Tom Stuckel was playing you know, about his number nine, uh, number nine jersey. It's not just about the number nine, but someone who can score the goals for you from a striking point of view. You are doing business, or you are getting defenders upon defenders. Colibane left, Christensen left. All right, I understand. Oh, uh, Rudy Gallet left, and uh, Christensen left as well. I understand that you need to fill in that void. But why are you spending so much on defenders? For me, there was no creativity, or there was no creativity in that Chelsea side in the midfield, in the middle of the park, apart from Matic Kovacic, and we know how injury prone he is. And Chelsea, for me, are not a well structured team, but what they've spent the most money in the transfer window. So, from the business point, the point of view, Chelsea did not do the right type of business, and Thomas Sugo was scrubbable. So, that's why I'm not surprised to see him go. But Chelsea going forward, getting uh, Graham Porter. A lot of people are saying this manager does not have enough pedigree to coach a, Chelsea, a side like Chelsea. I went as far to read people talking about, okay, if Real Madrid were to need a manager, would they go for Graham Porter? No, they would not go for Graham Porter because the, uh, the, Graham Porter does not understand the Spanish league. This man understands the English Premier League. He started his career way in Sweden, where he did tremendously well before coming to England with the championship side in Swansea. And then he was promoted to Brighton, or he was appointed by Brighton as their new head coach because his, his trajectory speaks well for himself. And every manager has that breaking point, that breakthrough point for them. So this is the breakthrough point for uh, Graham Potter and I see him doing well. Before Jürgen Klopp, became the Jürgen Klopp he was, he was given an opportunity by Borussia Dortmund for my so five. Before Zinedine Zidane became the Zinedine Zidane we know, he was given an opportunity for, by Real Madrid. No one needs Zinedine Zidane. He hasn't had any pedigree as far as coaching is concerned. But because Real Madrid, a big club, believed in him, and that's how he, he was able to repay that belief. And I think Chelsea, Todd Bowley has come on with so much belief and faith on Graham Potter. And of course, he has nothing more to do but to, of course, live up to the bidding. And I see Graham Potter doing so with Chelsea. All right. Now, uh, uh, Monday, like you, I called this firing. In fact, I've been calling it since last season. And uh, uh, two football fans who are, are colleagues of mine uh, saw me on um, a day, the day this uh, sacking was announced and said, ah, you were right. They didn't see it coming. Um, so I agree with you. But I, I also have a theory that um, Tuchel, uh, like you rightly called him, is... Um, it's not good at putting together a team. You know, he's good at, uh, at, at, at coaching, but at putting together a team, he's not good. He, like you said, they, the, um, the, the recruitment hasn't been that great. Um, they don't have a, a striker. Though they signed Obama Young, you know, uh, or Obama Blackclad Young, like, like, some, like calling him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not now for Swan, so I know that means a lot to you. Um, um, you know, so at least they have a striker. But uh, some will say that Tuchel is not the only problem in that team, that uh, uh, Bori is also a major problem. Uh, not being a football fan, he's um, probably not showing um, his adeptness at making football decisions. You are uh, the owner of the club. You are the CEO. You are head of recruitment. You are you know, almost like technical director of the team. You know, you're always popping up you know, with, in, at signing ceremonies with the players and holding justice with them you know, when you shouldn't be doing that. And for me, I think it's a red flag seeing that uh, Porter has been given a five-year deal worth £12 million pounds a year. Uh, I think this is going to blow up in the face of Chelsea and this is the end, or the beginning of the end for the club. Do you think so? I mean, because if you're a football person, you don't give a coach like Porter five years. Bolly doesn't know what he's doing. This will end up being a disaster. What do you say? It's not going to be a disaster or anything. This is a premeditated plan. 
Let me tell you something. I got some sources. Marco Correa from Brighton, right? Tuan Boyle had had it in his, in his mind to send Thomas Tuchel in ever since. Ever since the signing of Marco Correa, according to my source, Tuan Boyle was talking to Marco Correa and he was getting details about uh, Graham Potter. So for him to come out to give him five, a five-year deal, this is a premeditated plan. He has thought on this over and over. Five years is not a joke. I know for a manager like Graham Potter, he would think, oh, but let me just give him a chance, maybe two-year deal, and see how he performs with a chance of extending his contract. But boom, it's a five-year deal. So it's a long-term plan for a young man. And for you that has just spent about $278 million in the transfer window, are you not hoping of making profit? If in the next, uh, let's say, six months, Graham Potter doesn't deliver, are you going to fire him? If in the next two years he doesn't deliver, are you going to fire him? If you want to fire him, yes, but there are expenses to this. You're going to pay him. You're going to pay him out. So a five-year deal for Graham Potter is telling the young man that there's so much belief on you. Although that this is your biggest stage, this could be your biggest test as a coach, but we believe that you can do it. And we don't just believe in you for in, in the short term. We know that in the long term, you're going to bring glory to this Chelsea Football Club. I know a lot of people will not agree with me, but Graham Potter is going to take the English Premier League. He's going to take the European football by storm. So you just just watch out. Let's see how it goes. I know Tur Burley, I know I know there is a lot of red flag about Tur, Tur Burley, by him uh, becoming directors upon directors. I think it's the is the a part time owner. And of course, full time chairman, that's what they call him now. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That's a great <laughs> plan for sure. But the only thing I would not like him to do if he interferes on the uh, decisions of Graham Porter. That is absolutely not acceptable. But if he gives him a free flow of hand, if he empowers and gives him everything needed, both Chelsea have got quality players right now. Thomas Sugo, like you said, I would agree with you. He couldn't do business in the transfer market. I wouldn't do that kind of business as late as I am in football coaching. I won't do that. I won't do, I won't uh, invest on defenders. I know it's good to guide your goals, but in a game that you score more than your opponents, you certainly win it. So for me, the best way to win a game is by attacking, getting cre uh, creative midfielders, of course defenders, and of course, but also focusing on attack. But if you take a look, Chelsea try to get players. So it's a Chelsea problem. They tried to get Robert Lewandowski in the transfer window. Chelsea, too, have lost their pedigree as far as uh, attracting good players. They tried to get so many players in the transfer window for that attacking position, uh, position but they have to settle for Pierre Medical Bamian, which was a panic buy for, for me. So Chelsea need to get back to that uh, pedigree once again for them to be able to attract players. And I think Graham Porter is going to bring them back to that position. Interesting. Uh, um, we'll talk about the Super Falcons just very briefly, but um, f uh, I'll just add to what you've said, and maybe we'll have a wager to see how this plays out. Uh, Chelsea's uh, recruitment policy or strategy is bereft of ideas. You know, you look at the teams these days, they recruit based on the project they have at hand. And Chelsea, their strategy is just to go for any player who is available that the big teams want to buy and see if they can get that player, you know. Uh, so buy anybody who's, who is being talked about. But let's look at the Super Falcons. Uh, they put up a spirited performance, losing only to the United States of America in that friendly game, um, uh, only to because of an own goal. What are your thoughts on, on the match, United States of America 2, um, uh, Nigeria Super Falcons 1? Not a bad result, would you say? Terrible result. I can't even say it's not a bad result. Abysmal. <laughs> but of course, there, there are positives in that particular game because... I'll keep saying the value of this particular encounter was not about the results, but it was about the working out of the players, the inclusion of the Falconets into the squad. And it's a, it, it was a disappointing outing for the captain of the Falconets, uh, Tosin Demian, scoring an own goal, but you would, you would say she was split out of position. Uh, she was split in the defensive midfield role instead of the uh, defense line. But it's okay. I mean, there are so, some uh, positives. At least we lost by two goals to one in the second game, which, which means there was an improved performance from the first game. But what happened in the first game, losing by three goals to nil in the first 45 minutes, the game ending four goals to nil in the 90, the 90th minute. I mean, it, it was a poor performance, but the positives are we improved on our game. And we were able, the coach could have seen Randy Waldrum, although the defeat was very large. I can imagine, but for him, bringing in those young stars, the likes of uh, Deborah Biudung, I mentioned uh, of Atosian and Demian, 
And of course, if former Nomino, who formerly played for the under 20 as well. So for me, the positive is the new players who get to make, make their debut for the Super Falcons. But for the scoreline and the, uh, the margin uh, in which the Super Falcons were beaten on aggregate, if you want to put it by those two games, I think it's six goals to one. And another positive is that uh, the Super Falcons caught the United States. Uh, the United States considered their first goal since April. And that was the first time the Super Falcons of Nigeria were able to score against the United States of America, the national women's team, for the first time in 20 years. So, a lot has really improved about our football, but I think to judge the ladies by this outing, there is a lot of more outing to come before the, uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup. So, a lot is expected from these ladies. But for me, it was fair. But uh, if you take a look at the positive, but from the, the, the results, the scoreline wasn't a good one. It was an embarrassing scoreline. But the fact that uh, we improved in our second game should, of course, give us some thumbs up. But I think we, we can do better with this squad that we have. And I think there are some players that we called upon who, of right. course, uh, prefer the Monday. Yeah. I, I, I can't really go into details of that. Okay. Monday, thank you so much. I just want one word from you. Four losses in a row for Randy Wildrum. Is he the man to take Nigeria Super Falcons forward? Yes or no? Yes, it should take Nigeria to the World Cup. All right, thank you so much, He's Monday. He's the one to take Nigeria to the World Cup. Thank you All so right. much. It's uh, been a, a thrill having you this morning and uh, look forward to having you sometime soon. Thank you so much for your expert analysis, as always. Um, we'll take a break right now. When we come back, we talk some more with our next guest right here on The Breakfast. Please stay with us. <laughs>